What is the best file format to use on Sony cameras? Let's find out. Now today I want to talk about the different codecs available in the Sony cameras, whether it's the FX3, the A7S3 or the A7 IV. So let's explain the codecs from top to bottom then. Starting off with HS. HS is the new codec from Sony. It's H265 in Sony's own wrapper. This codec is far more compressed than H.264, which XAVC-S and SI use. Now, up until now, this has mostly been a finishing format, something that you would use for uploading to YouTube. And it is a great choice for that because it, it gives you far more quality in a smaller file size. But Sony have now used it in their camera. And in some ways, this is great news because it does mean a lot smaller file sizes while also retaining great image quality. However, it does mean it's much harder to play back on a computer and it's especially harder to try and edit with it. Unless, however, you have a new M1 Mac. In which case, thanks to its new media engine, it has no issue editing H.265 codecs. Now there is one little weird quirk when it comes to HS, and that is the fact that it can't actually shoot PAL 25 frames per second. It can shoot 24 and 30 in NTSC, but for some weird reason, it's just missing on all of the Sony cameras to be able to shoot 25. So unfortunately, it's not really an option for us to be able to use this uh, in everyday shooting. Now, of course, you can shoot at 50p, that is an option, but not really preferable when doing things like interviews or pieces of camera like this. Next up on the list is the codec that you probably all recognize from the a7 III and other Sony cameras in the past, and that is XAVC-S. This is just a H.264 formatted codec and it's, it works fine. It's not too bad. It's more compressed than I. It's going to save you on file size space. However, because of that heavier compression, especially now with 10 bit as well, some computers are going to struggle with it. Finally on the list, it's XAVC-SI. The format that everyone is being recommending because of the fact that it's so easy to edit compared to the other codecs. Now don't get me wrong, it's not super smooth, you're not going to get an experience like say with ProRes, uh, which is a much more lightly compressed format. However, it is definitely better than the other internal options with the Sony cameras. Comes with that though is massive file sizes and that's the big downside of shooting in XAVCI. The file sizes are going to be a lot larger because the bit rates are so much higher. And because those bit rates are so much higher, it also means that you need faster memory cards to actually be able to record at higher frame rates as well. You're not going to be able to shoot at 100 frames per second or even 50 frames per second uh, onto an SD card using XAVC-I. Instead, you're going to need those much more expensive CF Express cards. Not only are they going to be more expensive, you're also going to need way more of them because of those larger files as well. So it's kind of a double whammy when it comes to using XAVCI. What about image quality though? Perhaps those file sizes are worth it if the quality is much better. As you can see, the difference is quite minimal, especially watching it here through YouTube. And in fact, I think for most people who are shooting corporate work, things that are going to appear online, which let's be honest, is the vast majority of us, I'm not sure it's worth shooting using a larger intra frame format over the other options. The reason I say that is there's more to a file format than just the quality of the file that it produces. If you're doing this as a job, the larger file sizes really do matter. It means longer copy times. It means more time for backing up. It means more memory cards you, you need to buy. All of this costs you more money, which means it's negative effect on your business. Let's be honest, most of us don't have a DIT who can sit there and just copy all the files. We're going to be doing it ourselves at the end of a very long shoot day. Another advantage of using these smaller formats is that you can more easily send files to a remote editor. That's something that we're doing now. It's something that's becoming more and more common in the industry. So in summary then, where would I use each file format? Well, I'd use XAVC-I if it's for broadcast. I'd use XAVC-I as well if I'm using a much older computer because it's just going to be able to play back much smoother. If you do use I though, you need to factor in the extra time it's going to take to copy and have a good size budget for file storage. For me, L makes the most sense for current corporate work. It's a good compromise between the two Older computers can still just about edit it, and certainly if you've got the new Macs, it's not going to have a problem whatsoever. I think those smaller file sizes without really much sacrifice in image quality are well worth it. 
HS is definitely the future. It is weird that 25 frames per second is missing on the Sony cameras. I hope maybe one day that actually gets added so we could actually use it. Certainly that is the way it will be going though in the future and that will mean much smaller file sizes for all of our productions. Now you might be saying, what about all those different bit rates and options within each of the codecs? And well, I think that is a discussion for another day. So make sure you like and subscribe this video so you can check back for that film. There's things like 8-bit versus 10-bit, 420 versus 422, whether you should be shooting lower bit rates, higher bit rates, so many different options. So for all that detail, make sure you come back for another day. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.